afternoon, everybody. I'm Mrs. Allie, and I'm here in the Naples Library's children's room, and I'm here to show you some of the awesome new books that we got in the month of March. So hopefully you guys can come in and take some new cool books out. So we're just gonna take a short little session here and show you some of our cool stuff that we have on our shelves. The first cool book we have on our shelves is called Ambitious Girl. Oh, these are all children's books, by the way. <laughs> this is called Ambitious Girl. Ambitious Girl is by Mina Harris, and she is a sister to Kamala Harris. This is an awesome book about how the ambition of a little girl can propel them into great spaces. So when a little girl is told they are too much of something, too this, too that, too, 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 too. They can either choose to, you know, feel, feel sad about that and allow that to control them, or they can rise above it and do wonderful, great things. So that is the theme throughout the whole book. It's great for self-esteem, and it's great for, well, March was um, Women's History Month, so, we did get a lot of books in about women's history, and although this is not necessarily women's history, it's a great book for little girls and women. All right, the next book that we have keeps in theme with Women's History Month. This is called Michelle's Garden, How the First Lady Planted Seeds of Change, and it's by Cherie Miller. So the White House has had a history of having some garden space in the White House uh, lawn and area, but the biggest space by far was created by Michelle Obama with a grant that she got from Burpee Seeds. So this starts um, with them all at home before the presidency and proceeds through to show how the First Lady thought that, you know, health is a really big issue in America and how she could help change that image um, by planting a huge, huge, huge vegetable garden on the White House lawn and encouraging the children of the community to come help and, of course, to come enjoy the fruits of those that labor, which is really great. It's great for teaching about gardens as well and can go along with you planting your own garden this spring. So, great little book about how gardening helps uh, to teach children about nutrition and more, and also the love of the earth. Speaking of love of the earth, our third book that we have for one of our new books is called Lady Bird Johnson, that's who. She's, this is a story of a cleaner and greener America she was the first lady to Lyndon B. Johnson. And this is a really interesting book. She grew up in a small town in Texas, which is actually kind of like Bayou-esque. It's um, Caddo Lake, which is on the super, super, super eastern side of the panhandle of Texas. And where she grew up, there were tons of flowers and beautiful see if I can find the page. Flowers and trees and all sorts of natural resources. So she would go out into nature all of the time and fell in love with nature. Eventually she met Lyndon B. Johnson at college and dated him and then he ended up becoming the president of the United States. In the 1950s the United States was a dirty dirty place full of litter and garbage and pollution, and all sorts of yuckiness. And Lady Bird Johnson went to the White House and lived in the White House and noticed how dirty everything was. So she was one of the very first first ladies to become super involved with uh, nature and greenifying and beautifying America. She gave the first beautification of America speech that any first lady gave. She made a whole bunch of efforts toward conservation and preserving natural habitats for animals and for people as well to be able to enjoy and visit. 
and really started the ball rolling with conservation, cleaner and greener efforts. Super cool story about how you can change things. The next new book I have for you is called Laxmi's Mooch. <laughs> this is about a little girl who, if you look super closely at the cover, you can see that she has a little bitty bitty mustache. And she's super, super embarrassed about this mustache that she has because people pick on her for it and they call her a cat because she has little whiskers. And then her mother brings it to her attention that um, little girls and grown-up women all have mustaches, but a lot of the times you can't see them. So we have just these tiny, tiny little hairs here and hers are just darker than other people's and that's totally okay. So she ends up becoming proud of her little mustache or mooch in her language and really starts to embrace it. They use some historical figures like Frida Kahlo to, as examples of people who, you know, have, you know, hair in places that aren't necessarily traditional for Americans to. And she points out at the playground the next day that, you know, the little red haired girl has a little tiny mooch too. So everybody recognizes that they have similarities and they stop picking on her after she has embraced herself, which is really, really cute. Laxmi's mooch. The next book I have for us today is called My Day with the Panye. This story takes place in Haiti and it's a little bit of a cultural story about a little girl who follows her mom to the market and really, really, really wants to take after her mother and carry the panye or the basket on her head the way that her mother does to and from the town in the market. And you know, there's a lot of repetition in this book like that someday little bird, you'll be able to do this someday, someday, not yet, not yet. And so she goes through the whole book and goes to town several times. Her mom eventually allows her to carry the panye on her head, but she accidentally drops it. Whoops! It crashes all over the place. She's really discouraged. And her mom is like, hey, you just have to practice and you just have to have confidence. So eventually she does get it. And then eventually she'll teach her younger sibling how to do the same thing which is really cool. It's just, you know, if, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, you know? Having pride in what you do and feeling good about yourself. Great little story. I love this next book so much. It's probably one of my favorite books that we got this month. Um, this is called A New Day. It's written by Brad Meltzer and Dan Santa. You can always tell when he illustrates a book. He has the same style. This book is about all the days of the week personified. So they're all represented by people, types of people, and what they like to do. But Sunday decided that Sunday was just overwhelmed and tired of doing the same thing uh, every week, over again, over and over and over, week after week with no pay. <laughs> all year long, year after year, and is overwhelmed and decides that Sunday is going to quit. <laughs> so all the other days of the week are like, what are we going to do without Sunday? Sunday is such a great day of the week. So they campaign and they try to think of all of the new types, uh, the new days that they can have besides Sunday. They have all sorts of people come in and they're like, hi, I'm fun day. Instead of Sunday, we'll have a fun day. Instead of Sunday, we'll have run day. Instead of Sunday, we'll have, so it goes, can day. Like all kinds of different days are all campaigning and they're trying and trying and trying. Hatter day, gelatin suits day, my dog smells like corn chips day. And they get weirder and weirder and sillier and sillier. And all of the days of the week are just so overwhelmed with all of this. 
And then a little girl goes up to Sunday with this adorable little growing seeds in pots day idea and says, I grew this little plant for you Sunday to say thank you. And it turns out that all Sunday really needed was for somebody to say thank you and be gracious for that beautiful day of the week. And so Sunday comes back to work and also teaches the other days of the week that they can have days off too and that they can all enjoy different types of things. They don't have to be, you know, doing the same exact thing every single week, which is a really cute story. <laughs> I highly recommend this very silly book. And last but not least, another one of the new stories that we got in this week, or this month, is Tiny Kitty Big City. This is a great book for beginners. Um, goes through a lot of opposites, a lot of rhyming, and illustrates a great um, picture of city living, especially for someone so small, which is great for small children to identify with. So. You know, small, small kitty, crowded city, and we go on to illustrate Sunshine City, Lazy Kitty, you know, all sorts of really cool stuff. Just great for opposites, great for exploration, great for understanding what a city is if you do not live near a city, which most of us do not. Yeah, it's a great, cute simple book with simple illustrations, simple words, simple concepts, and it should be able to keep some attention from children. So that is it for all of the books that we have remaining from March. A lot of them have been taken out, which is super great and makes us so, so happy. Um, so if you'd like to come in and check any of those out, we also have a couple new ones in for April. But I'm going to wait till the end of the month to de debut all of the new April books. But guess what? We have some really, really cool ones in. Come, in. come on in and take a look. Otherwise, I hope you are super enjoying this beautiful day outside. We're going to have a beautiful rest of the week, too. So I don't blame you if you'd rather spend all that time outside. But we would love to see your smiling face. Thanks so much for listening to me and for looking at all these cool new books. Have a good rest of your day, guys. See you Friday.